Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the power of influence and why it should be important to you as a manager. So to begin, let's start off with the basics. What is influence? Put simply, influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of others. You can gauge how much influence you have over an individual by how willing this individual is to accept your will as their own. That being said, you don't necessarily need to be an influential leader to get people to do what you want them to do. So that begs the question, why is it important? Well, think of it this way. You are in a managerial position where you have authority over others. Because of this, it's very easy to get them to do and follow your orders. But what people who use simply their authority to get people to do things do not realize is that power without influence is like a machine without oil or maintenance. So let's have some uh, story time now. I served in the, my country's armed forces for two and a half years. And during that time, I was under the command of many different people with many different backgrounds. Now, in the armed forces, there's a very rigid structure with how decisions are made, and it's called the chain of command. Uh, disobeying the chain of command is a very serious offense, and it's also punished very seriously. Uh, because of this, no matter what kind of leader you have, things got done. Um, but what really separated the good leaders from the bad leaders was how things got done. So during a training mission, I got to experience this firsthand. Uh, myself and my squad mates were placed under the command of a second lieutenant, who for the purposes of this story will henceforth be known as Second Lieutenant Johnson. Now, Johnson had just finished Officers Academy, which was a very difficult program. Just to give you guys a bit of perspective, this guy was treated like dirt for the past two months of his life. Aside from this, he was fresh, and this was his first time being in command of anything. Uh, just to put it out there, lacking experience doesn't mean you're a bad leader. Experience alone does not build or destroy influence either. No, what was most detrimental to Johnson's influence over us was his arrogance and his unwillingness to listen to advice from others below him. When something didn't go his way, it was never his fault. It was always the fault of someone else. And we had a very simple objective that day, uh, set up a trench line and defend it. Now, my squad mates and me, were not new to this. This was probably our fifth training mission, and we had done this many times. But our attempts to give our knowledge to Johnson with spacing and how to split up work and stuff like that fell on deaf ears. He had his idea and he was not interested in our advice in the slightest. On top of that, when members would underperform, he would treat them disrespectfully instead of correcting issues that they were facing. And uh, for the first little while, we accepted this and did our job. But uh, after a week under his command, my squad made an appeal to have him removed as our leader. So this is a big no-no in the military, and we were expecting to be punished for this, which we were. But our appeal was heard, and eventually we were placed under the command of another leader. Um, since we had effectively did a mutiny against our leader, we were expecting his replacement to be someone even harder on us someone who would kick us into shape, right? Uh, and uh, we were placed under the command of an officer who, for the purposes of this story, will be known as Warren Jackman. Uh, Jackman was a combat veteran with more experience than any of us. Like, we did not want to mess with this guy. Uh, but his form of leadership was very different, and we all realized this very quickly. When we were tasked with performing the same objective, at a different location, the first thing he did was assemble us as a team and ask us, how do you guys think we should do this? By simply making us feel as if we had a say in what we were doing, Jackman gained influence over us, which was much more simple than just him being a higher rank. When our team huddle was over, he said, I look forward to working with you guys. His choice of words could have been anything. I look forward to being your commander 
or simply as you were, which is military talk for get back to work, you lazy animals. But it wasn't. It was, I look forward to working with you guys. So the remainder of the two weeks on the, in the field we spent with Jackman, he continued to actively ask for our input on how to complete objectives. Not only did we feel as if we had a say in what we were doing, but because of this, we were more willing to do it. We as a unit were invested in the outcome of our actions because we as a unit came up with the plan. Now, it wasn't until after I left the military that I realized that this was all an illusion. We were effectively still doing what he wanted us to do the entire time. He just made us feel as if it was what we wanted to do. And this all ties back into being a well-oiled machine. In the case of Jackman, his influence over us came from giving us influence over ourselves or perceived influence. Uh, Johnson's machine ran until it broke down, which was very quick. We didn't like each other. He had no influence over us besides his rank, which can be set aside. But what Jackson did was make us feel as if we had influence over our own situation, which made us become invested in what we were doing, what he wanted us to do. Uh, this is the power that influence can have over people, and it applies to the civilian world as well. An employee who believes that his objectives go hand in hand with the objectives of his manager, even if this belief is false, will be much more effective than an employee who feels that he's only doing his job because someone told him to. Uh, that being aside, that raises the question, how do you become an influential leader? Oh, sorry, guys, I seem to be having uh, trouble with my camera here. Give me a sec. Oh, yeah, I think it's six now. So, as I said before, around all this arises a question that many keep asking themselves. How to become an influential leader? Charisma. Now, I mean, this. Charisma and self-confidence are the extremely strong thing in our ability to lead our troop, to lead our team, even in our way of convincing our customer and seducing our partner, and even more, in our way of managing our families. Self-confidence is not an act of bravery or end up being a superman, but more important is the natural reflection of our ability to choose our life as a leader, is the reflection of our expertise, the reflection of our self-esteem, but more important, self-confidence is the self-knowledge of our talents, of our capacity. For you to be an influential leader, you need those five qualities. The first, the first quality you need that influential leaders have, they take a firm stand and commitment, not because they think they are always right, but because they are not afraid of being wrong and they, are always, they always learn from their mistakes. Second thing, they listen 10 times what it does talk. Talking too much kills their part of the world, blah, blah, blah. Talking too much is a mask, is a mask of insecurity, and the people perceive that. The deeply confident leaders are quiet and modest. They already know what they are thinking, and most of all, they want to know what others are thinking, what partners, what collaborators, what co-workers are thinking. Confident leaders want to know more, that's why they listen more. The third thing is that they they dodge the spotlight to let the other shine. A confident leader is the one who has the capacity to put others forward. Although they have made the largest part of the work, is the one who's not afraid of, of stepping back and let shine the others and help them to become more confident. He's not afraid to ask help. By knowing and admitting his human weakness, asking to others, help you demonstrate the, the expertise of others. And last, he thinks, why not? He's not afraid to take risks. He knows what, he knows that for access, for, for access to success, you have to know how to take risk. So I think to sum up what I was saying, an influential leader is the one who take, 
who know how to take decision. He's the one who's making more decision. Second, it take time. It take the time to listen to others. Third, it make the others shine. Fourth, it do not hesitate to ask help to others. And the last is the one who is always keeping his mind. Let do it. Go for it. Don't be afraid. He likes to take risk. And this is what made an influential leader. So thank you guys for watching and 